Hello, thank you for being here and for listening. This is the Relationship Recovery Podcast. No fancy intro today because I want to talk about the Pamela Anderson documentary that's now on Netflix. And I am not quite prepared for this podcast because I've been thinking about this for a week. I think that the documentary was very impactful and there are a few things, especially through the lens of narcissism that I want to highlight. And so for anybody who hasn't watched it, just so you know, I will be talking about it. So if you're somebody who doesn't like spoilers, this is your opportunity to stop listening. But basically there's a documentary out on Netflix about Pamela Anderson through the eyes of Pamela Anderson. And it's produced by her son, Brandon, and both of her boys are present within the documentary. And it basically tells Pamela's story. And out of everything that happened in her life, I had no idea that she had gone through all the things she went through. I was born in the 80s, so I grew up in the 90s and the early early 2000s, and Pamela Anderson was definitely a public figure during that time. I don't even think I realized that she fell off the map the way she did. I'm just not really into pop culture or things like that, and so out of sight, out of mind for me, I guess. But I remember thinking back, when I was younger about how beautiful she is. I watched Baywatch and I remember feeling and just thinking like, man, she is just so beautiful. And she has this light to her, this grace, this openness. And I know she's a sex symbol, but I really didn't know that growing up. I thought she was really pretty and she seemed to be really pure. And I didn't know all the other things that were going on, I didn't even think about it. And I don't think any of us really knew that she she did suffer a history of abuse. She talks about that early in the documentary, she starts out talking about her history being sexually abused and what it looked like for her and how she started to think about her own life at that time. She references the fights that her parents had and how they kept getting back together. And it hit really hard especially because I don't come from a home of sexual abuse, but I do come from a home of physical and emotional abuse. And it reminded me of how low it can feel and how shameful it can feel. And certainly not something that I talked about when I was younger. And she talks a lot about that, about how she kept it all inside. And it kept her far away and maybe distanced from her own self and her own body. And under... She takes us through understanding her experience at the time through her journals. If I ever told my story, it would also be told through my journals. I actually have all my journals from when, well, probably since I've been like 12 or maybe even younger than that. And so in the journals, you can see what she was thinking at the time and what her dreams were. And when she gets to the part about Tommy Lee, which probably about a quarter of the way in, she doesn't say it. But there are so many red flags when she first met him. I was watching this documentary thinking like, oh my God, I had forgotten about the domestic abuse um, that happened later in their relationship. But when I'm watching this and I'm like, oh my God, this is not going to be good. So apparently like the first time they met, he was instantly obsessed with her. So love bombing and then was like, I'm going to date you. And she talks about going on this trip to Mexico to go on a shoot and he, he's like, I'm coming. And then he shows up and she mentions telling the people at the hotel not to let him in. And he shows up, he love bombs the shit out of her and she does end up falling for him. It sounded like they ended up going out to party and having fun. And she fell into probably what we know as a trauma bond, especially with her history of abuse and how toxic he was and how strong he came on. I'm sure he did a lot of the things that we've experienced in relationships where people promise everything. And I thought it was really interesting to listen back and hear it, just to hear how she pointed out his red flags and how she understood her own experience. And how she fell so quickly for him. And so she doesn't say this, but, you know, as she might see it as falling in love that quickly, I was listening to her, everything that I could just hear was abuse, 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 abuse. And like, I don't 
like I said, I didn't remember there was a DV charge that will come later, but I wasn't surprised when we got there. And if you're listening to this podcast, especially, you've probably been in that space where you find somebody who's really meaningful to you. You think you connect immediately. You lean into that connection and they end up being a really toxic red flag and all of his behaviors, like pushing his love onto her and essentially stalking her at the beginning was exactly that. And on the outside, it looked really dangerous, but I think that especially in the era she was in and the parties that I'm sure she was going to, it seemed somewhat normal. Pamela goes on to talk about the relationship and what that was like. And when she describes how quickly everything happened, how quickly they got married, she was probably one of the most beautiful people in the entire world at that time, most well known in the world for her beauty. And she, I'm sure, was a bit targeted by Tommy. It does seem like they have a lot of warm memories in the beginning and she reflects back to the warmth. You also can see her get emotional. I'm sure we all know what it's like to have a partner like that. A lot of warm memories. That's probably exactly the space that we want to get back to when we are healing from love bombing. The sex tape is what led to her disappearing from the public eye and it's not something that I remembered in the past, but when I think through it, especially through the lens of abuse, it doesn't feel like Tommy fully validated her feelings about how she felt so violated. She talks about how angry it made her, how violated she felt, how vulnerable it made her feel, and how she tried to fight against it legally and prevent it from being out there. And it was because it was stolen and she's unable to, she's unable and she ends up crumbling and steps back because of that. I believe this was also, and I wondered while I was listening to that, was he there? You know, was he by her side? Was he in that fight with her? A lot of the footage showed just Pamela, but both of them were involved. And if your wife is mortified and depressed and losing herself as a result, it seems like that would be something two people would fight against. Pamela touches on Tommy's drinking and his partying, which then leads to the abusive incident that dissolved their relationship. And I'm sure there were other abusive incidents before, but it sounds like she saw black in his eyes, and that's when she got out. And just based on that incident and how she describes the abuse and all the other behaviors we can see, I'm sure a lot more happened. Whether or not she talks about it, that's, you know, this is her story. And I'm not someone who can say this happened, this didn't happen, but I think it's all part of it. And just based on the abuse and what we know, like the bookends, it definitely seems like there was more going on because she talks a lot about the controlling behavior. And this is something that happens in a lot of abusive relationships where the there's just extreme jealousy. And so she talks about how he would show up on the set and then they would have to close down set at times or that he would make um, trash her trailer because she had to have a kiss on screen. It's just, it's scary. And if someone's going to do that publicly, what then happens behind closed doors? And Pamela doesn't touch on how she's a victim of abuse, but you can tell that she has some signs of PTSD. You can see how sad she is and that there is something that, you know, she's healed, but it's still in there. And she gets to define her story however she does. But I do think from an outsider looking in just to realize that all of this is textbook abuse right from the beginning. And it's really hard. It's really difficult to watch somebody go through it. And so many of us have been exactly in the same spot that she is in. And she does, you know, you know, get sad when she's unraveling her story, but she does it in such like a natural way. She's funny. She's herself. You could also tell that she's exhausted. I, something I really admired about her is how much she loved her kids and how much they love her. And I think she went out of the public eye to really heal and take care of her kids, but they admire her and they love her and they're there for her. And that's a lot. And there are a few scenes where you see one of her sons putting their arm around her and 
there's just so much love and you can really feel it and you can feel how much they look up to her. And I'm sure that, you know, I have not gone on a deep dive of Tommy Lee on the internet, but I know that his, he's had some domestic violence things with his sons in recent years. And I'm sure there has been a lot of protection of them. And being that stable, healthy parent that is consistent in their lives. It made me, I don't know, through the lens of a trauma bond, sad, but like sad as Pamela reflect on some of the good memories of Tommy and the love that they shared. And, you know, I imagine she saw those best, the best parts of him, like what we all feel when we're in a trauma bond. It was a really good documentary and it could be triggering if you're healing, healed, or have been through any kind of abuse because you'll pick up on all those things too. But it does show the strength and the resilience when you lean into what's important and who you are and how you pray and when you prioritize that and how you can really begin to heal and come out on the other side. And I'm so glad that she's getting the recognition and the rebirth that she deserves. If you are interested in talking about this at all, I'd love to continue this conversation. I might do another one of these. I don't know yet, but you can always DM me on Instagram at emotional abuse coach. You can always email me, Jessica at jessicanightcoaching.com. Go find me at emotional abuse coach.com. Go watch that documentary.